Okay. Um, continuing where we left off, calculating the pH of a buffer. All right. So as you can see here, if you look at the Ka expression of acetic acid, um, let's go over here. All right. So this is acetic acid and it ionizes in water forming H3O plus and the acetate ion. So there are several ways to write it. You can write this as C2 as H C2 H3 CO2 and H3O plus and then C2 H3 CO2 minus. All right. Um, so this is another way of writing it. So the K expression is basically the products over reactants. So the H3O plus concentration times the conjugate base divided by the acid concentration. All right. So um, if you cross multiply, cross multiply is where you take the acid concentration here, bring it to the numerator side on the other side. Okay. So Ka times the acid concentration divided by the conjugate base concentration you're basically solving for h3o plus okay so h3o plus takes the form um ka times the ch3 uh, uh, the acid concentration times the conjugate base all right so h3o plus is equal to ka times the acid concentration divided by the um salt or the conjugate base concentration all right if you take the negative log of h3o plus that's ph if you take the negative log of ka that's called as pka because remember the word p means negative log all right and so then it'll be the negative log of the acid by the salt concentration so ph is equal to pka and then if you want to make this positive what you what you do logarithmically is you're you are inversing this that means the salt goes up and the acid comes down this form is called as henderson hasselbach equation so ph is equal to pka pk is basically negative log of ka and then log of the conjugate base or the salt divided by the acid all right we'll come back to this in a little bit but basically that's what we're doing here h3o plus is ka times the acid concentration divided by its conjugate base concentration okay so in the next slide you will see that if the acid concentration and its conjugate base are both one molar the ka value is given it's 1.8 times 10 per negative 5 the negative log of this is going to be negative log of that all right so ph is equal to pka so ph is equal to negative log of ka which is nothing which is nothing but pka um, and that's 4.74 all right so when you have equal molar concentrations of the acid and its conjugate base then ph is equal to pka okay. and then we arrive at this henderson hasselbach equation that's what ph is equal to pka plus log of conjugate base times the acid concentration all right so it's just kind of the reverse um and if you have a weak base like ammonia it'll ionize forming it'll pull off a proton of the water and it'll form oh minus and nh4 plus all right so you will be solving for oh minus rather than h3o plus if it's a weak base and it's conjugate acid okay so oh minus would take the form kb because it's a weak base times the um the the uh the base concentration divided by the conjugate acid concentration or else um, if you do the Hen henderson hasselbach equation it it'll be poh is equal to pkb plus log of nh4 plus divided by the concentration of ammonia all right but we're not going to be dealing with that we'll we'll stick to just the acid all right so ph is equal to pka plus log of conjugate base um, divided by acid concentration or ph is equal to negative log of ka minus the negative log of acid by salt concentration or h3o plus which is what the book prefers is equal to ka times the acid concentration by salt concentration all right now this is a constant 
it will always be a constant value at a constant temperature. So H3O plus is only affected by the concentration of the acid and its conjugate base. Okay. So small amounts of acid or base will not change this concentration, this ratio very much. And therefore the changes in H3O plus will, is, is going to be very small. So pH is maintained. As long as the capacity of the buffer is not exceeded, okay, small amounts of acid or base will have no effect on pH. But if you exceed its capacity to absorb acid and base, if you exceed this ratio becomes too large then h3o plus change will be also large and ph will also be uh, there will be a drastic change in ph all right so the ph of the buffer basically depends on the acid and its conjugate base concentration you can have any kind of um, acid weak acid and its conjugate base or even a weak base and its conjugate acid all right so we are going to strictly um just look at the weak acids and conjugate base and not look at this combination all right so you have the phosphate buffer which is found in plasma and then the bicarbonate buffer which is found in blood all right so let's look at that phosphate buffer all right so you have h2po4 minus and hpo4 2 minus the dihydrogen phosphate and the hydrogen phosphate buffer all right the ka value of h2po4 minus is 6.2 times 10 power negative 8 um and then you're asked to find out um the h3o plus and then the ph of the buffer all right so you will just plug it in you will write the expression first for h3o plus which is always going to be this form ka times the acid concentration divided by the conjugate base concentration all right all right so the ka value is a constant for h2po4 um, minus the acid and that's 6.2 times 10 power negative 8 all right so that's all listed here now what happens if the acid is 10 times more than that of the base a 10 to 1 ratio okay so 6.2 times 10 power negative 8 times 10 that's 6.2 times 10 power negative 7 that's the h3o plus concentration because it will directly equal to this all right times this ratio so if you take the negative log of that, it comes out to be 6.21, all right? So if acid is 10 times more, then the pH drops, all right, by one unit. Now, if they are both the same, then the H3O plus is basically the Ka value and negative log of that is 7.21, okay? Now, if that base becomes 10 times more than the acid, then the um, ratio is one tenth, all right. So therefore, the H three O plus um, is is dropping, all right, uh, by one one tenth, and therefore the pH is eight point two one, all right. It's increased by one unit. Okay. So therefore, small amounts of acid or base is not affecting the pH too much, all right. There's um, there's no drop, a drastic drop from 7 to say 4 or 7 to 10 if the base, um, uh, you know, um, small amount of base is increased, all right. So the ratio is what determines the pH of the buffer. As long as this ratio is a small enough value, then the pH of the buffer is maintained, okay. All right. So here in this particular buffer problem, again, it's with the phosphate buffer, Ka is 6.2 times 10 power negative 8. Now, the uh, acid is 0.1, the base is 0.5, all right? So going back, this ratio, this is 0.1 and 0.5. So that's a 1 to 5, all right? So this ratio is 1 by 5. Okay, so 6.2 times 10 power negative 8 times 0.2, that would be the H3O plus concentration. And then you have to take the negative log of that, okay? So let's try that out and see if I can get this to work. Um, and 
coming back. All right, here you go. And um, okay. All right, here we go. All right, so we have 6.2 times 10 power negative 8. Okay. So 6.2 exponent um, negative 8 times 0.2 because this ratio, as I said, this was 1 and this was 5. So 1 by 5, that's 0.2. So this is the value that I get, all right? Then what I do is I'll have to take the log of this, all right? And then plus minus, that will give me the negative log. So basically now my pH has gone up from that reference value of 7.21 to 7.91, all right? So when the... Um, the base concentration is five times more that of the acid concentration. You see that how the pH went up to 8.21 when the base concentration was 10 times more. So when the base concentration is five times more, the pH went up to 7.91. Okay. All right. Now stop this. Um, go back to the slide show all right so the ph of this buffer is 7.91 okay how does all this affect um metabolic function and especially um blood all right the ph of blood so the ph of blood is maintained in a very narrow range from 7.35 to 7.5 four five all right if it goes below this ph um lower than 6.8 or above uh, eight then um it will result in death all right so this ph has to be maintained all right the 7.35 to 7.45 okay so Carbon dioxide is the end result. So we breathe in oxygen. Oxygen is used by the cells uh, to produce glucose. And the end result of the cell metabolism is carbon dioxide. All right. So carbon dioxide is then carried um, by the blood um, and to the lungs for elimination. All right. Um, so what happens when carbon dioxide dissolves in the water? Most of the medium of the plasma, etc., body fluids is water, all right? So when carbon dioxide dissolves in water, it combines with H2O, H2O plus CO2, all right? H2CO3, okay? So that is carbonic acid. It's a weak acid. It immediately breaks down. One of the protons comes off and... Um, combines with water forming H3O plus and what's remaining is HCO3 minus, all right? So carbonic acid immediately dissociates forming car bicarbonate ion and the H3O plus, okay? As you can see here in this slide, carbon dioxide dissolves into water, forms the carbonic acid, that further breaks up into HCO3 minus and H3O plus, all right? So if you have excess acid which enters the blood fluid, the body fluid, and then remains, then what happens? It will combine with the bicarbonate present in the blood, all right? And when it does so, um, it's going to, um, when it does so, it's going to form H2CO3, all right? Okay. So that equilibrium will be shifted towards the left because H2CO3 will form this excess carbon dioxide that needs to be eliminated, okay? On the other hand, if you have excess OH- minus which uh, gets into the blood, then what will happen is that the OH- minus will react with the carbonic acid part, all right? So that will grab off the proton from the carbonic acid okay 
and then that carbonic acid now becomes HCO3 minus. So this is going to increase. It's going to make it go um, towards the right. Okay. So um, if you have high levels of acid, equilibrium is shifted towards the formation of carbonic acid. If you have high levels of OH minus, then equilibrium will shift towards the right. Okay towards formation of the bicarbonate ion. 